Well, here we are again, Gab and Dad, except this time we're in beautiful Nova Scotia on the South Shore. You can see the sea behind us. Uh, yesterday, uh, Gab and I went to Bridgewater, which is a town near where we're staying, in, uh, near our house here, and we saw funny people. And we also saw the movie. <laughs> no, there weren't many other people. <laughs> There were many other people seeing this movie. I think there were three or four other people in the very large. They're all fishing. Uh, they're, or all, they're all fishing or eat, having lobster dinners, I guess. Yeah. Uh, let me say right off that I really like this movie. It's the movie that I've liked most for over the last several months. It's billed, I think, officially as a comedy. This is no comedy. I think it's quite a dark tale. There are funny things in it, but that doesn't make it a comedy. It's a dark tale about a tortured man who has. Uh, wealth and fame. Uh, the but, Philip Slayton story. <laughs> yeah, is, uh, not, not exactly. <laughs> Who has wealth and fame but is told that he has a, what could be a fatal disease and it's about how he deals with that and then later he's told that he's got better and how he deals with having got better which in some ways is almost more difficult. Yeah, well how he doesn't deal with it. Or how he doesn't yeah. deal with it. This is someone who is a tremendously successful stand-up comic and star of humorous films but guess what? underneath is a tortured, not happy. Uh, not happy. Yeah, which is, you could say that's the old, you know, cliched story, which it is, but it's also uh, the kind of story that has a lot of uh, wealth in the material. You can derive a lot of, you know, uh, universal uh, lessons from it. There's parts of it that we can all relate to. Um, he's a very, a solitary person, even though he's surrounded by by wealth, you know, material and, and uh, beautiful things. women, and beautiful women, um, but uh, and so he he seeks this connection with the the Seth Rogen character, who is a young uh, struggling comic. So sort of his the before and after, or the the yin to the yang, whatever. And uh, and he seeks this connection. In some ways, I I said to you, it's almost like a bromance com comedy or a bromance bit. story. It's a relationship. It's a relationship story. story. It's relationship it's really, their relationship story. is the central story, even though most of it revolves around the illness storyline um, and uh, and it's so it's just seeing these two guys relate to each other but not just two normal guys I mean I think comedians part of what this movie says is that the comedians are a very certain breed of people the way they communicate or don't and the way they see themselves or, and fit into the world or don't that was a very interesting part of it I mean yeah. for example when the Adam Sandler character whose name is what's his name in the film Simmons. George George Simmons, Simmons. When he believes he's dying, I mean, he incorporates that into some of his stand-up comedy routines. Yeah, he tries to go back to his roots to uh, remember where he came yes. from. And so that all that self-discovery, I mean, we can all relate to that to, to a certain degree. It and sounds so a little, touching. It sounds a little trite and it hacky does. the way you describe it, but uh, this film is not trite. I mean, no. I found it very compelling, very sophisticated in many ways, very nuanced, and a really kind of realistic and gripping portrayal of a man who is very unhappy, uh, very anguished, uh, very lonely. Not a likable character. To, not a likable character at all. So if you're looking for a ha happy, fuzzy Adam Sandler film or a happy, fuzzy Judd Apatow film, this isn't it. If you're familiar with Judd Apatow, yeah. um, it's definitely the, the the darker underbelly of of all those uh, kinds of of stories. But I, I think that it it veers away from triteness because of the realism of the writing and the performances. And the very is natural. Very good. Yeah, really great performances. Adam and Sandler's so a very good actor. You're you're definitely engaged and 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 compelled by by what's going on now it's too long for me uh, yeah, for me too so it did affect that engagement and compellingness a bit uh, a bit of the looking at the watch aspect towards the the, the third uh, yeah, I third looked at my watch. Um, but um, I mean the material is there it, it does support the length because again it's not your 90 minute uh, slot uh, thigh slapping uh, comedy but there's a lot of penis jokes there are a lot of penis jokes, but that's sort of, you made that your specialty, haven't you, since you reviewed Bruno? <laughs> My specialty? Well, I mean, for, for, only from the point of view of movie reviews. There's been a lot of penis jokes this summer. I, I just yeah. call it like I see it. Yeah, there's almost like this sort of uh, morbid interest in male genitalia in this film. Maybe not morbid, I don't well, know. Well, we're fighting it's, it's the recession be... with, with uh, yeah. phallic... Uh, Humor, I don't know. Uh, not very well. I'm <laughs> trying, trying. But for me, this, as I said before, this, this film is the film of the summer. I think this is the best film I've seen in the last, I don't know, two, three, four months. That's a big statement. Well, it's not a big statement. This happens to be the best film I've seen in the last... It is what it is. I mean, it's the best film I've seen I don't know year. if I agree. I haven't analyzed uh, all the summer films yet, but I definitely enjoyed it. I think it was a pleasant surprise even um, because it has a lot going for it, and it I would recommend it. Yes, no, I would recommend it too. So there you 
go and you don't have to see it in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, it's probably playing in Toronto, wouldn't you think? And I, New York and, pla and places like that. <laughs> so you can probably Lucky see it someplace. You. Lucky for you. 